Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontrar la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello fellow travelers and welcome to this episode of the Wind America Travel Show. I am your host, Barry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination. Hey, maybe it's even yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you're just listening to is performed by Alberto Perez, and Alberto is the owner of the Lapa Lapa group of restaurants here at Puerto Vallarta, and those are the Lapa Lapa, the El Dorado Beach Club, and at night, that beach club transforms into the ever-so-romantic Vista Grill with those dramatic views of the Los Muertos Pier all lit up at night in beautiful colors. And of course, at La Palapa, you can enjoy that same view of the Los Muertos Pier all day long, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, seated with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It's just so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. This week, I have a really fun show. Uh, JR returns after an absence from the show, and we're going to be talking about street dogs and bugs. And then I have uh, two interviews from JR's meet and greet at Kelly's Por Favor Saloon and Cookhouse way back in January. Uh, one with a couple of listeners, Todd and Jeanette from Canada. And the other, an interview with the owner of Kelly's Por Favor, uh, Kelly Gauthier. Uh And she's also from Canada, believe it or not. How about that? bunch of French Canadians around here. But anyway, let's go see what's happening in Puerto Vallarta this week, April 4th, 2018. Spring break continues here in Vallarta as Mexicans celebrate Pascua this week. Uh, the week following Easter Sunday is called Pascua, uh, which is the celebration of the resurrection of Christ. And uh, Pascua marks the release from the sacrifices of Lent. So, all you Catholics out there, your 40 days of giving up tequila shots is over. You can return to your old ways of drunkenness and debauchery. Isn't that wonderful? And if you're in Vallarta this week, uh, you'll find that things will be settling down a little bit from last week's crowds and party madness. It's still very business. It's still uh, still very business. It's still very busy uh, this week. Don't get me wrong. Uh, still Easter break for a lot of people. And, um, but it's nothing like it was last week, but still party, party, party. It's a great time to be in Puerto Vallarta. Now, last week I said, I'd talk to you a little bit about my experiences of taking Uber in Puerto Vallarta. So let me give you my report right now. Now, first off, I didn't go all out and hail an Uber the minute that I got off the plane. Uh, now if you want to do that, you actually can, you have to get off the airport property and be picked up. So you you have to uh, you have to cross over the bridge over Highway 200 uh, again with all of your luggage in tow, but you can do that, um, and it's much cheaper. But listen, do you, you really want to schlep all your belongings out of the terminal, uh, go up that steep ramp to the bridge, then down that equally steep ramp coming back down uh, with all your luggage again in the tropical heat after a big long plane ride? If you want to do that. That's great. Um, not for me, but you can. Now, what I did use Uber for was when I wanted to get from my Airbnb over in the downtown area to, let's say, the south side late at night, like at 11 or 12, or maybe if I wanted to head on down the, to, uh, to the marina, for example. Um, I checked the price. It was always a good price when it was late, okay, like 11 or 12 at night. Uh, the driver came almost instantly, and he came in a really nice white Nissan sedan, picked me up right in front of the condo, and dropped me off at Andales. Uh That was uh, one of the first nights. Uh, on the way back, though, I took a cab because the cabs, they hang out in front of the restaurants. So it's not like I used them all the time. In fact, just a couple of times, but it worked really well. Remember, 
Uh, we talked about things in the past that might put yourself into danger or even your Uber driver into danger. Uh, let's go over those really quickly. You don't want to hail in front of a, a hotel. You don't want to be in, near a taxi stand uh, or streets that dead end into the Malacan, um, places where taxis actually congregate, you guys. Um, you don't want to tempt fate. So that's why I'm summoning them, summoning them uh, from my Airbnb. Um, it wasn't a problem, right? Uh, if I was in a hotel, that would be a totally different issue. Uh, so just remember. Um, now, also keep in mind that Uber, they, they cross state lines from Jalisco to Nayarit to drop off. But if you are in Nuevo Vallarta, they can't pick you up there. So you're going to be taking a taxi home from Nuevo if you took an Uber uh, into Nayarit. Uh, so anyway, next time you're in Puerto Vallarta, just be sure, just, you know, make sure that um, you have that Uber app downloaded on your phone, uh, get your credit card all hooked up and all that stuff. You won't need pesos. It's cashless. So it's really cool that way. Uh, you won't have to have proper change and it does come in handy for sure. I found that out. So, you know, just have it just in case if you're don't want to bother, just take a cab. Cabs are great. Uh, now, just a reminder that the clocks sprang forward on Sunday, so that means JR's Tuesday evening meet and greet at Kelly's Por Favor Saloon and Cookhouse is now going to be at 6.30 and not at 5.30 like it is during standard time. So we are now in the uh, daylight savings hour. Starts at 6.30. So just make a note, uh, if you want to see JR in all of his glory, <laughs> Uh, if you have questions for him, you can always catch him there at Por Favor on Tuesdays. Just stop by, have a drink, buy him one, listen to some rock and roll, and have some fun. It's uh, it's a good time, that meet and greet, i got to tell you. Now, speaking about JR, his birthday bash is coming up this month, April 22nd. It's going to be at Que Pasa. It's going to start at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, Sylvie and the Zippers are going to be playing. And uh, you guys, get ready. JR is turning... 78 years old. Whoa! <laughs> I can't believe it. I wonder if he can. Anyway, there's uh, there's new ownership over at K-Pasa, and uh, I can't wait to get down there and see how the new owner is running the place. Uh, maybe he'll talk with me. Who knows? But if you are in town, uh, go wish JR a happy 78th birthday. Buy him some drinks, you know, bring him some gifts, shower him with cash, you know, whatever you have. Um, I have all the information and, uh, and a picture of the flyer, uh, which is uh, for the party in the show notes for this episode. So check them out and then get down to Cape Pasa and dance and drink and celebrate with my buddy, JR. Okay. All right. Let's get on with the show. Uh, when I come to Puerto Vallarta, one of the first things that I do is I hook up with JR. I have a drink at the Thirsty Cougar with him or, or Bar, Bar La Playa and, we talk about my plans for the visit, and uh, JR is my go-to guy when I need some some great ideas for interviews, and uh, he's always there to introduce me to the people that I want to interview, uh, you know, folks that I don't know well enough. He knows everybody. So anyway, we usually catch up on the local gossip, and we coordinate our, our outing or two that we're going to take together, and then um, as the stay goes along. We just touch base along the way. Anyway, I was hanging out at his place, and we started to talk about stray dogs and bugs in Puerto Vallarta. And I, I didn't have my recorder with me, so I just hate it when that happens. Uh, so I asked him to hold that thought till I got home, and I, I hooked up with him the other day, and we talked about little ants and stray dogs, and uh, we talked about famous street dogs in in Puerto Vallarta. So let's get to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and talk with the birthday boy himself, John Russell, Jr. in PV. So, uh, okay. Before you before we talk about before we talk about dogs, though, let's talk a little bit about. Can we talk about ants? Can we talk about ants? These like sugar ants. ants? Okay. Like you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't leave anything laying around when you're in the tropics out there. It seems like it's. How do you how do you get rid of these? What are what are these sugar ants anyway? Okay, sugar ants. Sugar ants are so small <laughs> you you'd almost miss them if you weren't looking for them. Yeah. Um, 
and they will get into your sugar bowl uh, in no in no time at all. Uh, they are probably the hardest ones to get rid of, um, mainly because they're really small. Yeah. Most most of the other ants we get, you know, particularly in our kitchens, can be uh, countered by mixing up a concoction of sugar and boric acid mm. in, in, a, in a good enough proportion so that it doesn't kill the ant right away, but enables the ant to take this mixture back and feed it to the queen, who may be living several meters underneath your building. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if, if it's not strong enough to kill the, the little worker ants at their job, and enables them to go back and feed it to the queen and kills the bean and the, the queen. And then all of a sudden, there's no ants at all. And what's, what's the uh, recipe? I mean, what's, you have to mix oh, uh, okay. certain, certain uh, uh, yeah. you know well, what it I, is off I, the top of your head? No, oh, okay. I have to look it up. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. But that's what, it, it's easily available online. I mean, see, that information is easily available online. Okay, well, you know what? I'll have it in the show notes, so no problem, you guys. Look for it in my show notes, and I'll have the recipe for you. Right, and then what you do, what I do is I get a little cotton wool, and I soak the cotton wool with that mixture, and then you find the line that the ants have you you know that ants uh, you know they navigate by leaving smells or, or following smells from previous ants mm -hmm. so they, they will have a line and and you put this on the line so that they can't avoid it and right. they find it and, oh wow look here's some nice sweet stuff we take that back to mama mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. perfect all right so that's how that's how you do it because you know what whenever i I am really, really careful whenever I uh, am in Vallarta, if I'm eating in my room, which is very seldom because I'm always eating out. But if I'm eating at home, I make sure that everything's wiped clean because you never can keep those things away. It doesn't, need, doesn't matter where you are. I mean, you could be at the top of a 10-story building and they still get in there. It's amazing. Yeah, I've, um, I've actually, like my sugar bowl, um, it would get invaded by the little sugar ants all the time. I found out that if I put a little plastic dish underneath it, actually I stuck it to the bottom of the bowl, and then I sprayed it with that wonderful stuff, WD-40, and they hate that. Yeah, they'll stick I right also, to it. They'll I, stick right to yeah. it. Yeah. I also use WD-40 uh, on, uh, uh, on the line that's uh, hanging with my uh, hummingbird feeder, which of course is sugary, right? And that keeps the that keeps the ants out of the hummingbird feeder. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, great tip. I like that. All right. So while we're on the subject of bugs, you what what? I mean, you live kind of. You're not like in the jungle, but you live you live up up on the hill, up towards the hills. Um, what what kind of what kind of crazy things have crawled into your place? Uh, of course, you've well, got, you got a cat, so you got you got a cat that chases the crazy things and actually probably brings you some too. Oh yeah, yeah, Hercules, uh, the fearless Hercules, <laughs> who attacks dogs even. Um, no, I mean, usual the biting things. Not that many mosquitoes around so far this year. It hasn't warmed up enough really for them yet. Um, mosquitoes, I I use a spiral made by Raid, called Raidalitos, um, and you burn the spiral and it produces a smoke, and I have it under my desk, mm -hmm. um, because normally they're, they're coming in on, on your legs and something down low. Mosquitoes generally uh, do not have a very high ceiling, as it were, when it comes to flying, so uh, a ceiling fan will keep them down. Um, they can't fly in an airflow more than about three miles an hour. So if you keep enough airflow, you'll get rid of them. Good idea. All right. All right. Then we have, then we have the no seams or the hen hens. The um, mm. <laughs> what do they call them here? Genians. Well, it should be pronounced should be pronounced hen in, Um, I'll have to check that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Okay, they're, they're called noceums in English, and 
you can't see them, and that's why they're called no see uh, You can see them if you happen to catch them in a streak of sunlight with a dark background. You will maybe catch them. They are so small they will go through a screen. The screens will not help you with them. Uh, insect repellent is the best defense. And again, air movement. They cannot fly uh, with the air moving too fast. So uh, a fan will uh, take care of that. Good, good, good. So have you ever had invasions of bugs other than uh, your your sugar ants? Well, of course, the, the season for the uh, termites is about to start. In fact, we had a little swarm the other night, which is strange because usually they predate rainy season. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, it's hopefully not rainy season yet. Yeah, okay. um, <laughs> but, I, but there was a small uh, swarm last night. I was at Cape Paso and noticed that. Um, and, of course, you, you just turn the lights out. Um, they're going to come for the lights. The geckos that live in my house will take care of any errant ones, but I still get occasional ones. I've just found a book the other day with um, slowly being eaten by the termites. <laughs> How exciting is that? So you have uh, so well, it, <laughs> break open a book well, and there they are. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but they can't get into my iPad, thank God. <laughs> um. All right, so can, can we let's go talk a little bit about let's talk about dogs. You know, I see a lot of stray dogs. I see a lot of, um, of course, there, there's a lot of animal animal rescues going on there. A lot of that happening, um, and I getting off the dogs and getting to cats a little bit. You know, there's cats all over Quale Island. Um, yeah, but they go in and poison them now and again. Yeah, yeah, it's too bad. When, yeah. When did they When did they start appearing on Kuala Island in such great numbers? Oh, they've been there forever, it seems. Um, you know, people don't neuter the animals or, or spay their animals, and so they get unwelcome kittens. So they go and they put them on Kuala Island, you know? Mm. Oh, so that's actually a dumping ground. Yep. Ah, interesting. Okay. All right, so... What about stray dogs? Okay, street dogs. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, when I first came here, I was amazed that, that, that dogs and cats will pass each other with almost complete indifference, <laughs> with some exceptions. Um, uh, it, uh, street dogs, without a leash or anything, are not aggressive normally. I found that dogs, you put a, put a dog behind a fence and it becomes aggressive. Mm -hmm. Put it on a lease and it will become aggressive um, because it, it, it's territorial. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, you know, <laughs> I remember leaving home one night. I was only a block away. When I passed a house, I knew contained a cat and three dogs. The cat was outside, nose to nose with a notorious ginger tom from my block. Just as I passed, the ginger tom attacked with a loud howl. Immediately, one of the dogs from the house shut out the door and chased the invading tom up a tree, protecting his cat. If, if, should you ever come across an aggressive um, Mexican dog, all you have to do is to bend down and pretend to pick up a rock. Uh -huh. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if there's no rocks there at all. The dog will turn tail and run away. Really? The, the, these dogs have grown up with kids throwing stones at them all their life. It, it, it's ingrained. So if some dog is coming at you, just stoop down, look like you're picking up a rock, and uh, maybe even make the stance like you're getting ready to throw it or something. Huh? Yeah, I know. Um, we, but just by bending down to pick up the rock, the, the dog will turn around and run away. I've had this happen. I, I've used this, and it works. So Anyhow, are there are there famous uh, are there famous animals that you know of over there? Oh yeah, well the most famous street dog of course was Coco. Um and Coco hung out at uh, Los Muertos Beach in front of Cuates y Cuetes. Oh. Uh and very famous. Uh, you can go online and find photos of Coco. If he used to be dark, but he's 
steadily gotten browner, lighter, grayer, and, and has lighter markings. Um, but before he died, he, he unfortunately died just a few years ago. Um, but there were many miniature cocos around, so he's obviously spread himself. <laughs> All right, so uh, keep your eyes open for Coco's um, offspring, huh? Right, right. I, um, some people tried to take Coco home, but but Coco was a street dog, and as they say, you can take the dog out the street, out of the street, but you can't take the street out of the dog. Uh-huh. Um, uh, another one, is, a famous one, is uh, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Scooby, uh, Scooby-Doo, uh, he, he actually adopted a, a couple friends of mine, it wasn't that. It wasn't the other way around. He adopted them. They made the mistake of letting him stay in their place uh, a couple of nights, and he would thereafter lay outside the front door waiting for them. Uh, but he was a street dog, uh, but he was still he would still roam the streets. He was a a, 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 a very regular customer at Alaska Diner restaurant. Where he would come to the front door to get the the offcuts and pieces that the customers had left on their plate, which Roger kept for him. Uh-huh. He would never enter the restaurant. He would stay at the door, two feet maybe, just a few inches over the line, yeah. um, and he would wait there until he was served. <laughs> um, during the summer, when Roger would run the air conditioning and had the door closed, he would come to the door and you would hear one woof. Not a lot of barking, just one woof. And and, and if nothing happened in 15, 20 minutes, there would be another woof. I'm here was my stuff. Ah, uh, yes. I've got a dog that okay. does that. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Scuba's gotten older now. Um, the couple, my friends, uh, even got married. <laughs> yeah. And now he stays with them more or less full time, and they say he's getting fat. He's getting fat, and he's become domesticated, huh? He he's retired. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> retired from being a street dog. <laughs> Good. Well, when you get old like that, it's a good idea to find somebody to take care of you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you do a, if you do a. A, a search online about Coco, the the Los Muertos uh, dog, uh, you'll find a lot of a lot a lot of posts, uh, especially after he died, a lot of memorials uh, to him because everybody loved him so much. Yeah, Coco the dog. All right. I wonder if well, I wonder if I can find a picture of him somewhere. I'll bet I can. Oh, oh yeah. There's pictures online. I was going to go and search for that for you, but um, I'm sure you can find it. I'll send you a picture of Scooby oh. uh, standing at the doorway of Alaska Diner. Yeah, that'd be great. I wish you would. Alaska Diner is no longer. So, what's there in, right. in, the, in Alaska Diner's place? What's there now? Uh, about a four-story, very swift, modern-looking um, apartments. Ooh. I mean, they're all, all sliding smoke glass doors and very un-Mexican looking. Mm-hmm. All right, so much for that. Not my cup of tea. <laughs> Not my cup of tea at all. I, I don't know, you know, um, who knows? I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. I yeah, might right. say something no, rude. No, yeah, no comment. <laughs> That's right. Anything else on doggies? Um, well, let me see. Of course, the street dogs, uh, there's less of them now, mainly due to uh, all these uh, nice-thinking people who have, um, you know, adopted them. Mm-hmm. So there's less of, <laughs> there's less actual street dogs now. Yeah. Um, there's still local dogs, but they don't roam like the, the, the traditional street dog did. I mean, um, Coco and Scooby would, you know, they would cover the whole of Colonia Emiliano Zapata, you know, um, you would find them all over the place. But now they're not so many because they've been rescued. Yeah, excellent. Well, that's good to know. I remember back in the day, there were a whole lot more of them. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess that a lot of the dogs that I see that I think are stray kind of hang around the same places. <laughs> so maybe they're just, you know, they are pets and belong to 
people, you know, that kind of let them roam out their doors. I don't know. Well, they, you, you don't, you can't really tell. Um, <laughs> you know, if they've got a the collar, then there's probably a fact that somebody's put a collar on them, then, then, then it's they've got some association. Um, but but usually the, the street dogs, are, you know, they just lay around. I, my friend Gary, a gallery of Pacifico that you interviewed, I believe, mm -hmm. um, he, had a, he had a black Labrador, which, of course, he called Blanca. Of course. Right. <laughs> All right. And, and he never had a fix. So every time she went into heat, he had a hell of a time with the male street dogs. So now he, so then he kept her locked up in, at home uh, when she was in the heat. And, and he would go to his gallery. Um, but one street dog in particular seemed to have definitely been stricken and fell totally in love with Blanca. And even though Blanca was locked in the house, he resolutely guards the front of the house all night against all comers, much, some much larger than he. Um, the strange thing is that when, when Gary leaves for work and leaves Blanca behind, the dog follows him all the way to the art gallery. Um, huh? <laughs> you know, because I, 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 he can't have... Blanca, so he takes the next best thing is her owner. Owner, right? Because yeah, because Gary smells like Blanca. But but the trouble is that the the dog would eat right across the entrance of the doorway to the gallery. You know, people have to step over this dog that's laying there. You know, <laughs> waiting waiting for the trip back to the house where his beloved is locked up. Oh, so that's all right. Interesting. Okay, is it, is that still happening? Is that still happening, Jr? Oh, no, Blanca passed away, oh, unfortunately. Oh. Because I know that Gary has a dog. He has a dog that he has at the gallery now. It's a it's a white dog. It actually, he's like, oh, uh, now that one you could call Blanca, right? Or are you going to call her Negra? No, I, I probably called it Negra. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to call no, I know he's got a, I, I No, I know he's got a new dog, but yeah. um, <laughs> and they help. Yeah, very funny. That's very cool. The street dogs are really well trained in expressions. They have that expression with that sad eye expression when they're looking at you when you have food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's and, any and dog. It, and, it, and it's that look that, like, oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> yeah, I need to feed my family. I know, I know that look. I know that look. <laughs> yeah, they, they perfected it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, people try giving them dog food, and they don't, they don't like dog food. They, they would prefer a taco, where they pick out the meat and leave the beans in tortilla. Oh, man, these dogs are so <laughs> spoiled. They are spoiled. Are we do done? they have? Do they have uh, licensing over there in in uh, in Mexico for animals or for, in Puerto Vallarta for for dogs and cats? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's funny, Barry. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Well, you know they gotta they gotta license uh, roosters around there too, because uh, for if we you actually could flip a coin for noise ordinances for dogs and roosters. Well, I had a friend who lived in an apartment uh, uh, building where somebody had a dog that barked all the time. So yeah. he bought a rooster. He bought a rooster and put it on his balcony. That's great. I don't know if he ate it later. But... <laughs> oh, that's great. That's pretty funny. Well, you got anything else to share, my friend? Uh, not right now. Okay, so who do you buy your bangers and stuff from? Oh, I get bangers from my friend Mark Hughes. Mark Hughes. What is the, it? Yeah, the, 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 the Lee and Thistle Pie Company. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so he Leak makes his own sausage? He, he's, he's half Irish. No, I've been no Irish. God, no, he's half <laughs> Scottish and half Welsh. So the, the, don't hurt the, yourself. Don't the, hurt yourself the, with that that big uh, turnaround there. Right. The well, the, the leek the leek is the national plant of Wales, and the thistle is the national plant of Scotland. Right. Right. So okay. 
Lee and Thistle. And he's at the Saturday market every morning. Um, it usually sells out completely by by eleven thirty or so. Um, I, but we started. He has a guy making sausage. Okay, so they do make. Well, they, they he, well okay. but he, he he makes sausage rolls and and such like you know. Um, so he was going to make. We started making bangers, right? And uh -huh. I helped. I helped develop the recipe. The first time he made them, there were far too much sage in them, um, and we reduced the sage. And now we got a really good banger. Okay, so you didn't yeah. have you didn't no. have uh, your expertise in getting well, getting the recipe and the and the taste, you know. Well, it, it's the knowledge of the taste, yeah. you know. I mean, um, uh, well, you know, um, Mark and I we worked it out and now we got a really good banger and there's other people buying them i'm sure because he always has them there and i can buy six bangers for a hundred pesos yeah and, and, and you and, know that you know you know they're your recipe right and 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 two uh, for one meal you know that's three days food three days protein for a hundred pesos cool well you know how to do it you know how to stretch a dollar dude you know how it's done yeah, well, I have to. All That's right, good. get to work. Go have some fun. All right. All right, talk to you soon. Thanks, man. See you later. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. I have pictures of Scooby-Doo and Coco the Dog in the show notes for this episode of the show. <laughs> Funny, these two dogs look really alike. I don't know. Maybe they could be related. Well, they did say that Coco got around. Anyway. Um, for that recipe for the borax and sugar solution that JR was talking about for the sugar ants, um, WikiHow says you mix uh, half a cup of sugar, one and a half tablespoons of borax, and 1.5 centiliters of warm water. Um, you soak the cotton balls in the mixture, put them out near the mess of ants, and then the sugar will attract the ants. They'll take the borax with it back to their home and uh, kill the queen. Now, if you have small children or pets, you need to make sure that you keep them away from the borax. And you always wash your hands after using it, too. Uh, so, there you have it. Now, I have a link to the recipe in the show notes. And uh, you can check it out there. And thanks, JR. Thanks for that tip. Now, next up. Uh, I always join JR when I'm in town for his meet and greet, and I piggyback on his event by uh, inviting listeners to let me know what they're doing in paradise. Uh, I even offered t-shirts this time. Well, I just set up my microphones, and the band was warming up when two listeners came in and introduced themselves. They said they were Todd and Jeanette from Alberta, Canada. And uh, I think we were both... Well, I think the three of us were equally as excited to be meeting one another. I, I, I gave him T-shirts, and almost immediately, uh, Todd disappears, and then he reappears with the T-shirt on. I love that guy. Anyway, I asked him if they wanted to tell us what they were doing in Vallarta, and they said yes. So let's hear from listeners Todd and Jeanette from Por Favor Saloon and Cookhouse in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. All right, we're in uh, Kelly's Por Favor, and uh, we've got uh, Todd and Jeanette from Alberta, Canada. Hey, you guys. Thanks for uh, coming to the meet and greet. Well, thanks for uh, having the show and inviting us down. Right. So uh, tell me what you guys are doing in Puerto Vallarta. We are living the dream. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> we're here for six weeks. And this year we're helping a community called El Nogalito, mm -hmm. and we raised a thousand dollars Canadian, and we're going to help with the school and help the kids there. Wow! What does El Nogalito do? What do they? They're... It's a, it's a small community uh, between going towards Boca. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boca de Tamaulipas. De Tamaulipas. Yeah. Bueno, bueno. All right. So. Uh, what kind of what does that involve when you're doing that? Does, how much time does that take of your of your time when you're here? 
Well, it's our first year, so I'm not sure. But I know that the school needs a new uh, washroom and a door, yeah. so we're going to buy that. And, uh, yes, apparently they've been having a problem with the toilet disappearing, so they want to replace <laughs> the front door. Okay. Make it more secure. Yeah. So the toilet stays put. Excellent. <laughs> All right. All right. So how many times have you been to Puerto Vallarta, you guys? Oh, wow. Seven years? Seven years. Seven. Every winter started as... Uh, new visitors in Nuevo Vallarta uh, ventured into town one day on the bus and never looked back. <laughs> you thought, okay, we found where we want to be. Exactly, exactly. we did. All right, so where'd you stay the second time, that, or the when you finally uh, broke free of uh, Nuevo? Our well, our first year was at the Now Amber downtown. Okay, beautiful place. Jeanette and I were on our own. Uh, no kids. No kids. We only have one, but no kids. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and that was really the start of, of our venture here. Absolutely. In Puerto Vallarta. After outside of the resort. Yes. Oh, this is, like, this is like the first time you really broke free. Oh, yes. yes. Right on. Because when you come with kids, you always kind of protect the kids so you don't venture too far. And they don't want to be far from the pool anyway. Right. So you hang around the resort most of the okay. time. Okay. All right. So yeah. that's, that's neat. What, what resorts were you at in Nuevo? The Rio Vallarta. Rio Vallarta, yeah. It's a big one. Yeah, we did uh, Royal de Cameron. That's closer to Bucerias. Uh-huh. Also known as Royal de Canadian. Okay. Um, what's that book? The only... I think those are the two that we stayed at. The most. Uh, the yeah. Most. Hey, look at I think the band is getting ready to start up. Why don't we uh, take a quick... Oh, he is? He's, he's holding off for us? Oh, all right, all right. Very good. Um, all right, so... We talked about Ryu and and uh, Royal, Royal de Cameron. What did you think of that? The Royal de Cameron is really nice. Uh, close to Bucerias, close to town, easy to walk into Bucerias. Mm-hmm. Uh, Have a nice we beach. We enjoyed it there. Yeah, yeah we did like yeah. it there. It it's just nice. not. It's not Vallarta. No. Would you say, which would which would you say that you like best of all the ones that you did stay at though? I would say uh, Royal de Cameron. Okay. If, and I would um, say the Ryu. Oh, okay. All right. Well. Rio's too big. Rio, Rio, Rio had uh, had alcohol in the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> At Rio. Bingo. All right. Winner. Winner, winner. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we're going to take a quick break and uh, let this band get started. Absolutely. So uh, think about the story I asked oh, you guys we have to a couple tell of me, stories. okay? And then yeah. we'll get on with that, all right? Perfect. Okay. All right. okay. Thank you guys so thank much. You. Thanks, Barry. All right. Thank you. All right, we we moved. We moved. We, we moved upstairs, and if you, if and when you get to Puerto Vallarta, come over to Kelly's Port Favor and go up to the rooftop lounge up here. It is so cool, you guys. Um, all right, so we were talking about the now Am- now amber, right? The now amber. Okay, yeah. all right. So tell us about that. First time, first time without kids at the now amber. Uh, had Vallarta was at our fingertips. Anything we wanted to do, we could do. So we were off. Got bit by the timeshare. Oh, you did? <laughs> Shark. <Uh-oh. laughs> yeah. But no regrets. Have a beautiful place in... Uh, Garza Blanca. Garza Blanca, uh, nice. down the highway. So no regrets at all there. And we we do use, use it every year. All the much. time. We use our yeah. timeshare all the time. Yeah. So that that's great. Yeah. We enjoy it very much. We enjoy that very much. We're going to be there this year for two weeks. Okay, so what you do then is you stay um, at a place and then you use yep. your timeshare time during that stay. Correct. During that stay to either extend it or start have, it off. Have, we have friends come down, we can get a, a bigger place. Because most, most of our places here are just either a studio or one bedroom. So no yeah. room for... Friends. Good. You don't want them anywhere. No, no. <laughs> we've all made that mistake. Yeah. You make it once and it never you happens. Learn. You learn. Yeah. You ne- do learn. never happens again. That's right. All right. So um, you were telling me that you were here in the summertime. Yes, I was here in the summertime, I would say five years ago with my our son, David, and four of his friends. They had graduated the grade 12. And on the five uh, kids, 
three were 18 and two were 17. So the parents of the 17 year old uh, didn't want them to just come alone. Of so course. they wanted a, a parent a responsible to come. adult. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that was we, we call that a chaperone in French, don't we? That yes. is it, a yes. chaperone. chaperone. You have that right. <laughs> so I came with them. It was the third week of July, way too hot for me, but perfect for them. So they needed me just to book their supper or make reservation and use my credit card. That was about it. We'll just clarify that a little bit. It was perfect for them because they slept all day. Yeah. Because they were on the party all night. Right. Okay. Yeah. Great. We, you know, we know how that goes. Yeah. Young, you yeah. Know, out there testing, you know, their limits. Oh, when they, they tested them. They did. Uh, well, yeah, when you're in Mexico, <laughs> they had fun. that happens sometimes. They had Although a lot of fun. Be careful. Be careful, everybody. Don't test too much. <laughs> um, tell me about the weather, though. How was that? In July, it wasn't for me. I'll never come back again. It was humid. It was way too hot. Uh, you couldn't walk on the beach without without being too hot it, it yeah. was it's not for me but the kids of course they loved it because they slept all day uh, <laughs> and you so had air conditioning so th that's no it problem. so no mama problem. here was way too hot let that be a lesson to you guys who uh, are thinking about coming in July that Jeanette here says beware beware, beware. Yeah. Beware. Yeah, Be prepared I, uh, yeah absolutely well I've been I've been here um, not in July just in October and it's hot and humid, and yeah, it can be stifling if you don't have air conditioning. Um, you know, that's why I always try to find an Airbnb during the summer that's got air conditioning. Yeah. You know. yeah. Well, it even affects your um, your activities also oh, because yeah. it's so hot. Like you walk, you're thinking, wow, I need more water. So the activities were limited for me anyway. Right. Oxo, walk, 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 walk. Oxo, walk, 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 exactly. walk. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Okay, so right now you are staying in a place in town? Yes. We rented a one-bedroom penthouse condo from uh, PBRPB. Oh, cool. Tim Long, Tim, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice little uh, condo. Um, it would be a block inland from Woolworths. Uh, if anybody knows where that is, it's right at the beginning of the Malacon. Yeah. Nice. You're nice in the fifth, view. Of the, uh, fifth of December area. There. Correct. Fifth. Correct. Yeah. Fifth uh, Cinco de December. Yeah, that's Let's what see. they say here. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Really enjoy it. So you really enjoy you uh, you recommend that area? Nice, isn't it? Oh, it's it's amazing. I. It, you you find other little places to eat and to shop and to enjoy coffee. Yeah. So, you know, we found a coffee shop that we liked a lot. And we found it on the uh, website, on their Facebook, uh, Puerto Vallarta. Everything you need and want to know, right, I right. believe is what it's that's called. A, yeah. That's a great site. We a, learned a, quite a bit on that. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, JR has got the Vallarta Advisor. Also, so that's uh, another uh, Facebook group. I think I have all of JR's maps printed out already. <laughs> I think I printed every one about three years ago. Used to, we used them the first couple of years down here. Use them every day. Yeah, but now you can find your way around because yeah. you you've lived here. I mean, you feel you you spent a lot of time here. I'm very yes. jealous, both of you. Of course. Where you live right now is the frozen tundra, so it's probably a good thing you're here. Pretty much, pretty yeah. much. I think uh, the week before we came, it was Celsius minus 37 to minus exactly. 40. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. I think minus 40 Celsius and minus 40 Fahrenheit are the... S yeah, that's oh, where they kind of yeah. meet. Uh, yeah. Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> don't ask it's me. It's cold. Yeah, it's cold. I don't right. think it ever gets that cold in California. No, no, no it does not. I don't <laughs> even know what that feels like. Yeah, I can tell you. You don't that want right to know. Now. I, believe me, that's why I live in California. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, what are your favorite restaurants, you guys? In town here, Kelly's Por Favor is yeah. is is high on our list. We yeah. like, We've eaten uh, here quite a bit. Rio Barbecue. The Rio, the Rio, the Rio, Rio barbecue. barbecue. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, further uh, up the river. Up in Paso Ancho. Yeah. Really and nice my place. favorite is Bistro La Cigale. 
Oh, really? Yeah, it is excellent. It's cozy. It's it's perfect for me. I and like it a, a French lot. Okay, so and of a, course, it's a French, French restaurant store. for yes. a French woman. Okay, I know why now, Jeanette. What do you like when you go and eat there? Oh, pardon me? What do you like when you eat there? Well, we have the uh, mussel. Mussels and fries. Yes, and we have the we have the filet mignon, and it's wrapped in bacon. Uh huh. So and their coffee is excellent because it's very uh, spiced. Oh, okay. So it's really good. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, what else? Any others? Pretty much all the taco stands. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me. Yeah, I'm a. I'm a. I'll eat tacos every day. Uh, you got a favorite? If I, if I have two meals a day of tacos, that's that's fine. Yeah. Look at these guys. They're eating. They're eating for like seven dollars a day. That's yes. what's happening right now. Okay. So, uh, what's your favorite taco stand, Todd? Oh, favorite one is tough. There's a couple in Old Town here. Um, Do you remember the name? I can't remember the name. You know, we know the, the place. You know the streets. Uh, streets. One is on the street. With the pier, okay. It's at. It's almost at. The, you're talking about the crepe lady right there. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. There is one near the Guadalupe Pharmacy. Oh yeah. Yes, up near the pharmacy. Yeah, there. there's like yes. four of them lined yeah, up there. Yeah, exactly. Yes, the yeah. first one I like. They've uh, been there for like 50 years. Yeah, yeah. that's what I've heard. Yeah, it's amazing. They Unbelievable. It's like. It's either 40 or 50. I can't remember which. But. I just visited one uh, yesterday in uh, Cinco de December. Uh, it was called Pepe's, I believe yeah. was the name. It was a, a, a sit-in style taco restaurant, but okay. I got it to go. You did. Uh, that's that's right my there. favorite is lunch on the beach. Yeah, Pepe's right there is right across from uh, the Pemex station yes. when you come right into yes. the... Yes. Uh, Excellent food. Excellent food. All right. Good. Good, good, good. I agree with you. Yeah, and, you know, never have enough tacos. When I'm home, no. I'm eating tacos too. So, no. there you go. And it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not out of the question for us just to uh, sit on the beach and enjoy a cerveza and a bag of cookies yeah. for lunch. Oh, <laughs> how We had sweet. fun that time. Yeah. Two beers and a bag Two of cookies. And a bag oh, of my cookies. gosh. All that the was the beach. lunch. All right. Well, as long as you don't lose your cookies, you're all good. <laughs> no. Uh, what would you guys tell a first-time visitor to Puerto Vallarta? Wow. there's. We say to our friends all the time, wow, we say to so many, we, we, so many things to them because we want them to come and visit here. But what would we say? I guess for the first time, coming here would be to stay in Puerto Vallarta, not necessarily outside in Nuevo. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult, not difficult, but it's challenging to get from Nuevo to Puerto Vallarta yeah. to visit. So to really visit Puerto Vallarta, stay in Puerto Vallarta. Good. Uh, Cinco de Desombre, Centro, Old Town, uh, depending on your budget, uh, you, you can get anything under for any, any budget, any budget. You You're can right. find something here, for sure. Very good. Yeah. Jeanette? Wow. I'm a coffee drinker, so of course I would tell them, if you're a coffee, drink, if a coffee drinker, get go to this place and this place and this place. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, yeah. come on. Uh, tell us. Out with it. Let's go. What place and what place what and what place? place? What's the name, Todd, of the new one that we just found? Everything for me is, is by location. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can never remember a name. Well, that's it's right. on the north side of, of, of the Lay uh, supermarket. North of Lay. Uh, okay. They, they grind their own coffee. Their coffee actually comes from Nayarit. Ah. They bring it in by the 25 kilo bag and they grind it on site. Okay. And it's it's a, it's amazing coffee. Wow. Okay. So send me an email. Tell me which one and yes. I'll uh, okay. link it up uh, on the uh, on the Absolutely. blog post. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good idea. And their, uh, their bakery is excellent also and it does come from the same place now you're right yeah yeah Nyerit. and it's yeah. it's really good it's a nice little place very friendly and if you want your americano just a little bit uh, more um strong you just ask for another shot of espresso ah cool easy as that is not bad yeah that's what they did to yeah. me uh over at uh, starbucks last night i walk in there at about 9:30. And he says, all I've got is espresso. I don't have any drip coffee for you. Do you mind? And I went, seriously? 
Uh, um, you guys have any uh, any cool uh, word of art or stories you can share? Um, we've done a few excursions. Uh, we've done the excursion to um, where you go and, and watch the show in the evening. Ah, um, something of the night. Yeah. Rhythm of the night. Thank Rhythm you. Of Rhythm of the night. night. Thank you. Rhythm of Nights. You know what? It's a it's a great show. Um, my wife's a little nervous with uh, boats and the water. Uh-huh. Yeah. It takes yeah. her quite a bit to get past that. And it's a boat ride across the bay. Yeah. Very quick boat ride across oh, the bay. Oh, it's a quick one? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they... I uh, was very scared. She was pretty nervous. Interesting. Okay. Pretty nervous. This is not a boat with solid seating and, and seat belts and... Life jackets right there. You're sitting on a lawn chair on the deck <laughs> as you bounce across the bay. The lawn chair moves with you. And I thought <laughs> I was not going to come back really, on land. Really? She wanted to take a taxi home. Ah. Yeah. yeah you I can't would have, get a taxi home from there. No. No. I that's, tried, there's no road. Yeah. I tried <laughs> no. for a taxi, a ride. I wanted to sleep there, come back in daytime. I had to come back on the catamaran. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So a little rickety, a little rickety ride. Yeah, but yeah. a really nice evening, nice dinner. Um, the show was fantastic. Now this was uh, probably four years ago. Yeah, the show was fantastic. Yeah. It's just that me being scared. Yeah, you couldn't get over that. Took yeah, away from it. I couldn't. I just wanted to come back on land yeah. in Puerto Vallarta, and I was happy once I was back. Yeah, you just got down and kissed that ground, didn't you? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but the show was great. I have to admit, it was great. Okay, all right, well, good. So, maybe over the last four years, they've uh, figured out how to affix those uh, lawn chairs onto the deck. I've seen it once. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. No, I was just saying for anybody else, maybe you know. I of know. I, I know for sure, Jeanette, you're not going back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that. Any any other cool uh, stories you want to share with me? We've 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 done the we've done the wrong bus. Uh, a, a couple few of times, times. Uh-huh. yeah. Get on a bus, not really sure where it's going. Just get on and go. Uh, one time we ended up quite far up in the in in the inland. hills inland, thinking we were going to Walmart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no Walmart there, and the bus driver was super nice. He was uh, laughing, and he, he was laughing. Another bus, and we just. Switch bus. Switch buses. Come back to Walmart. Oh, that's it was good. good. That, it that's was good. good. So it's yeah. that way. It, it is. It's safe. Puerto oh, yeah. is safe that way. The bus drivers are great. The yeah. people are great. Yeah, they're I've, fantastic. I'm always safe here. I've never felt felt not safe. Me right. either. Right. So yeah. I recommend like for people to come and visit Puerto Vallarta for sure. Experience Mexico. Yes. Puerto Vallarta is Mexico. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. And you guys are going to be going to El Tuito, I hear. Uh, yes. Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You ever been? No. Uh, never been. Uh, I'll, give never you a little, been. I'll give you a couple of tips uh, a little uh, before you go, okay? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Cool. Yeah, I just got back from there. Some fun, a little fun area. So. I bet. We're looking for, uh, apparently their specialty is cheese and bread. Yeah. In t- El Tuito. Yeah. And my wife's a big cheese fan. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, they got that cajota cheese from there, and yes, and there's a there's an art an art studio there yes, that I want to Maria's, visit. Also, Maria's art studio. Oh, Correct. She's a sweetheart. When you go there, you tell her I said hi. I oh, interviewed yeah. her a couple of days back, so you tell her I we said will hello. Te- we will tell her then. All right, right on, right on. Is there anything else you want to share with us before we uh, run off? I think if 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 people just come and and just. Uh, just relax and, and get into the groove of Vallarta. It's 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 a wonderful experience. Absolutely. All right. Well, and, thank and thank you for your uh, yes. podcast. Ah, well, you're welcome. We, we enjoy it very we much. We enjoy it, and the music of La Palapa Group and uh, oh, we just dance amazing. on that music all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I love that song, man. I yes, us so, too. Uh, it's, I do. What can I say? <laughs> wonderful. All right, you guys, you're the great, you're the greatest. Thank you so much for uh, for coming to the uh, to the meet and greet with uh, with me and Jr. Well, thank you, Barry, and I'm glad we we made it, and I'm glad we found it. And thank you again. Thank you again for your podcast. All right, I love them. They are so cute. What's with this Canadian accents? I just I. Uh,
having a great time here. Anyway, uh, can you imagine that they dance to Samba de Puerto Vallarta every week? I can. That's kind of cool. Uh, I have all the tips from Todd and Jeanette in the show notes, and she also emailed me her favorite coffee places. So here they are. She likes La uh, Bodeguita de Café, del Café, which is on Calle Panama. I have directions to that. Uh, she likes Dee's Coffee in Old Town. She likes Page in the Sun in Old Town. That's a cool place. That's a place where you can uh, buy books and read books and drink coffee and and settle in and you know do a little work. It's great. It's a great place. So good picks. Check out the show notes, you guys, and um, I'll have them there. Now, the next interview is with the owner and chief bottle washer at JR's favorite meet and greet location. Uh, her name is Kelly Gauthier, and Kelly was well. Kelly was a real surprise. Uh, she has a heart of gold, as you're going to find out. And well, she loved Vallarta so much uh, that she set out to improve on a place that was already there, and she transformed it into a really cozy place that would be your home away from home or your family in a strange land and a place where you can have breakfast lunch or dinner get live music even have a great view overlooking lazaro cardenas on a rooftop patio uh, with a bar and music and great seating well you're going to just have to see it and you're just going to have to hear from kelly and hear how she explains her story about her bar kelly's por favor saloon and cookhouse on the south side of Puerto Vallarta. So let's go right now and meet Kelly Goche. Uh, Kelly, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what was your path to Puerto Vallarta? A little bit about myself. Single mom, raised my twins alone, ran a chef by trade, ran a coffee business, uh -huh. mobile cappuccino business, we started vacationing off-season in Mexico, Puerto Vallarta, mm -hmm. when they were about 10. We started extending our trips week by week, up to three weeks, three months. And as my kids grew older, they needed, didn't need mom at home. Mm -hmm. I started spending time here on my own, and I basically needed something to do if I was here for longer than three months at a time. <laughs> or I'd have to go home. Ah, okay. So wh what did you do? I bought a job. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Tell us about your place. I bought a little hole-in-the-wall bar and turned it into home for everybody. Wow. So that hole-in-the-wall bar is Kelly's? Kelly's Por Favor. Saloon and Cookhouse. Excellent. So when, when, did, you, when did you buy uh, Kelly's? 2013. Okay, so you've been at it for a good, almost, well, for a good four years. Yeah, we just celebrated our fourth anniversary uh, last week. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell my listeners about your place. Um, could you describe it to them? Because this is, uh, you know, it's a podcast. You know. Describe it. I say saloon and cookhouse, red plaid tablecloths, home cooking, I actually post on a sign at the door that says, we're the family that you haven't met yet. Yeah, I happen to agree with you there. It's yeah. nice. And um, so what have you done since you purchased it? You said you, 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 you bought it and then you kind of turned it into a home, a homey, made it homey. Made homey. It place. We painted all the walls to look like a saloon indoor by a local artist named Ernesto Garagos. We... Did that for the first three years. We didn't have enough seating capacity once we started playing live bands. Mm -hmm. The bands that started me, I started them in Puerto Vallarta. They still play here to this day, once a week. But we had to have more seats because they were dancing in the streets and it was getting dangerous <laughs> because we're on a major bus route. Yeah. So yeah. we put 50 more seats in, 10 out front and 40 on a new floor. Okay. So Open. tell us about this This. We're, that's where we are right now, you guys. We're sitting out uh, on this this great open air um, rooftop rooftop patio with artisan chairs that a local made for us. 
my very expensive floor that everybody argued about. Uh -huh. And that's the first thing people notice is it looks like wood. Uh huh. Carrying on my theme upstairs with all our Mexican colors. And again, Ernesto Garrigo's painted waterfalls and jungle scenes. And we have our Mexican colors in all our signage. Yeah. yeah. Glass tabletops. It's really nice. Captain Morgan footrests around the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Uh -huh. It's a place people love to hang out. Definitely. Tell us a little bit about your kitchen. What do you? What kind of food do you serve here? Mostly home cooking. A few Mexican specials. My specialties, the things that my kids said, Mom, if we open a bar, the only things we need on the menu, ribs, meatloaf, and fish and chips. Right on. And Kelly's chicken enchilada dip. Oh. That's our signature really? dish. Really? Really? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? Three I cheeses, roasted chicken, green chilies, baked to bubbling, and we eat it with fresh tortillas. Totopos, as we say here. Yeah, go figure, right? I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be the favorite of people that come in? Would that ribs. be it? Oh, ribs. Enchilada dip could be a men an, an appetizer, mm -hmm. shared. But uh, if you're eating it alone, it's a meal. Okay. But ribs is what they most comment on. On TripAdvisor, let's say. Yeah, yeah. If I what can say we, that. Of course you can. Yeah, you know, we're, we've had, we've actually had... TripAdvisor people on this show, so okay. it's okay. Good. Um, when do you, do you do you serve lunch and dinner? What do you serve? You bre breakfast, breakfast, lunch, lunch and, and dinner? dinner. Ah, okay. So, do you, what kind of a breakfast do you serve? Canadian breakfast. We do on occasion. We'll put on some Spanish specials or Mexican specials, but eggs, toast, pan fries, bacon, fifty nine pesos. Nice, great deal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you're right here on Lazaro Cardenas, and uh, just a great, kind of a central spot. You really, you really got a good, good location here. Really good location. A block and a half off the beach, still considered old town. We have the cobbled streets, which is the flavor of Puerto Vallarta for me. Yeah. The churros down down the street, you can smell them cooking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of challenges have you found running a restaurant in Mexico? They don't have companies like we have in Canada and the USA to deliver your food for you. Uh, we shop every day for fresh products. Okay. You go up to the market up the street? Is that mm -hmm. what happens? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's one of the challenges. And then there's a license for everything. You need a separate license for your awning, your pictures, or your... Your, your sign, your street signage. Sign. Yeah. The street, you can't have anything on the sidewalks. You have to have a separate license for your tables and your chairs on the sidewalk. Uh. If you even get permission to do that. Yeah. Um, getting the building permit took three months. Uh huh. Okay. So there's challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how about your staff? How are they? Are you, how my staff is my family. I love my staff, and I think they feel pretty strongly about me, too. Yeah. Well, I can see why. <laughs> um, I brought them all to Canada last year. You did? Okay, so with that said, you, you, I guess you closed for a little while during the summertime, or no? No, they did it alternately. All right, so let's ask you about the kind of entertainment that you guys have. Here. Live music, seven nights a week and five afternoons. Really? Seven nights a week? Seven nights a week, seven different bands. Man, all right, you do it. And you have uh, Tres Cuartos playing here. Uh, Three quarter band, Tres Cuartos, will be playing tonight at 8 o'clock. Yeah, I'm gonna Every have, Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Yeah, I'm going to have an interview with those guys. Those guys are great. I can bring... F Fernando just walked up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, they know. They know. I, I'll have to see. They, they, don't, they don't know I'm here right now, so shh, don't say oh, anything. I won't say a word. Okay. All right, let me ask you a couple questions about... Because you, you would visit Puerto Vallarta all the time, and you live here. You're not always mm -hmm. eating here at Kelly's and stuff like that. Mm -mm. Tell me your... Besides Kelly's, what are your favorite uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner spots? Breakfast at home. Okay. I, I get that a lot around here. And my favorite beach bar, La Carreta, usually gives me lunch. I usually eat lunch at La Carreta. Okay. But my two 
favorite spots that I always recommend. One would be No Way Jose, Barcelona Tapas. Yeah, those are the two I'm going to mention for now. Okay. I, I like both of them. I take all my friends if we're going somewhere special. i would never heard of that first one, that beach one you talked about. What's that one? La Carreta. It's a beach yeah. bar. It's a oh. local beach bar. They close at 7 o'clock. Okay. It's about four beach bars over from the pier. Okay. Okay. Going towards Conscious Chinas. Got it. All right. All right. All right. I'll have to check that place out. Mm-hmm. This is my, it, their bar makes me feel like I make people feel when they come here. Welcome home. It's a home. It's what Romy says. Yeah. Welcome home. There you go. It's cheers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. When you are walking around, mm-hmm. working behind the bar, mm-hmm. um, what do people say about your place? If they don't know I'm the owner, what do they yeah. say? Yeah. What do you hear them say? They say, oh my God, what an amazing place. Oh, can't wait till next year. They haven't even left yet. And they uh, they found it too late. We're leaving tomorrow. I wish I had found this at the beginning of the trip. And I think most of the people that I have coming in here now, if I'm doing something behind the bar and they walk in, I stop what I'm doing and I go to the door and I greet them. Or they come around the bar and I stop what I'm doing. Those people can wait an extra minute for their drinks. And everybody, they don't care. No. They want the same attention when they come in and I haven't seen them for since the last season and it's okay time isn't time there's no time lost here in Puerto Vallarta I traveled many places and many places in Mexico many places in Europe and I travel somewhere else come back to Puerto Vallarta some Dominican Republic right back to Puerto Vallarta this was always the route you'd always this would be every second trip because you always had to come home mm-hmm. and you miss the people you met here I've been to Cancun, I've been to San Luis Potosí, I've been to Aguas Calientes, I've been to Zacatecas. We always come back here. These are the people that, people would say to me, why Puerto Vallarta? Why did you buy a bar bar in Puerto Vallarta? And I say, you know what? It's not something I can tell you. You'll feel it when you get here. And I have never brought anybody here that didn't return over and over again. (laughs) That's wonderful. What's your favorite favorite part about this restaurant? This restaurant? A combination of the people that come here and how they interact with my staff and my people. Whether they're having dinner or having drinks, soda. The fact that they always come back here. This is always their focus point. And then they go... You know, anybody needs help, anybody needs information, they always go see Kelly. If Kelly's not there, ask Eric. Eric will help you. He'll take you to the airport. He'll pick you up. Whatever they can do, we do it. And not because we have to. Right. Because we want to. That's what Puerto Vallarta is about. You meet people in Cancun, they're always in your pockets. The service staff, they're always in your pockets. You come here. You go into a place two or three times and they want to take you home and make you dinner. Your family, come and have dinner with my family. I want you to come and meet my family. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Um, What kind of advice would you give to a first-time visitor to Puerto Vallarta? Don't stay in an all-inclusive resort. Because you won't get the flavor, whether it be the food or the people, you won't... Get the flavor of Vallarta. You won't learn the foods. You won't. You're going to stay in and meet a, meet a bunch of people from Canada and the United States. Yeah. You're not going to meet the people that make Puerto Vallarta what it is. Right. I, I, well, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. If you were going to take a day trip somewhere, mm-hmm. um, where would mm. it be? Mm. Well, today we went on a boat, and they, Talia introduced us to three different families of whales. She's a marine biologist starting her own company, Uh tour company, and we fished, we went to this 
secluded beach that had silky white sand. Had lunch on the boat. So a day on the water is one thing I would recommend here. And I've been on many different tours. And it's hers that I'll go back to after today. And the other thing I would do, I've done the, the zoo. And I've held the babies. And it's it's overpriced, but I'd do it again. <laughs> you know, it's expensive, but yeah. who's going to let you hold a cheetah? Right. Or a baby lemur. This is my son, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you. Um, is there anything I missed? Is there something that you want to say that I um, didn't cover? Asking me now on the spot? Yeah. I, um, no, I don't think so. All right. But well, in an hour, I may say, you know what I should have said? They all do. <laughs> That's okay. In fact, you know, sometimes I turn off the microphone. You want to ask him and anything? Then, no. No, I'm just talking to you, Kelly. Okay. I'll get you later. <laughs> um, a lot of times I turn off the microphone and start putting my stuff away, mm -hmm. and then the person I'm talking to starts talking, and I look at him and I go, wait a minute, where did that come where from? Where did that <laughs> <laughs> How come you weren't saying that about yeah. it? You know, mm -hmm. but it didn't happen with you because it came. I got it oh. from you. Oh, good. I really appreciate that. Good. Tell everybody where they can find you. We are on the border of, well, in Old Town, but right on the border of the gay zone. We don't divide ourselves. Some people divide us, <laughs> but it, you cross the street. And they're all gay bars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this side of the street. They come in the bar now. Uh -huh. They are so comfortable in here that they're actually, it's taken three years, but they come in. And I'm not trying to, when I say they. Yeah. They're comfortable in here. Excellent. And so you're cobbled on, streets. So you're on Lazaro Cardenas? Lazaro Cardenas. What's your cross streets here? E. El Vallarta and Pino Suarez. Okay. And uh, do you have a Facebook page? Face yes. Okay. And do you have uh, like a website? Or just Facebook? Just Facebook. Okay. That's usually what everybody needs. Yeah. Too many places to go to. It's hard to answer all their questions. Yeah. In one morning. Uh-huh. Because that's what I do. The first two hours of my day are answering questions, posting the bands, making sure they know what the food specials are. Yeah. That's a lot of work, kid. So you yeah. went, you went, retired, went to paradise, and went to work. Oh, no. I didn't retire. I go home and work in the summer to make sure I can keep the bar open here all uh -huh. winter. Uh, what do you do? What do you do? I'm a chef by trade. I have a mobile cappuccino business. Oh, that's so that, that's still rolling. Mm -hmm. oh, that's mm -hmm. totally cool. Sometimes it's too slow here in the summer, and I can't lay everybody off. Right. If I close the bar down, I put five people out of a job. Right, right. So I go home and hope that... And, and make money and keep that thing going. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you got a huge heart, my dear. <laughs> I love my people. Well, we love you. Thank you so much for letting me introduce you to my audience. I really appreciate well, it. Thank you. And thank you, Kelly. Wow. She's great. You guys need to uh, to go and check out uh, Kelly's Por Favor Saloon and Cookhouse and just see what I'm talking about. All right. I've got pictures, like I said. I've got contacts and everything like that in the show notes for this episode. So check it all out, and um, if you can't make it for you know for dinner, lunch, or breakfast, get on down there on one Tuesday and uh, meet Jr. there for the meet and greet over there. But you know the they have great bands uh, playing there. Oh, I think every Tuesday night they have um, they have La Tre Tres Cuartos playing there, and I love those guys. So anyway, thank you, Kelly. You are. Just fantastic. Okay. Well, that should do it for this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. Next week, stay tuned for more on-the-ground reports from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, with travel tips, great restaurant and excursion ideas, and more. But until then, remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending us your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to vallartainfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour through him right from his website. 
Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition, my friends. His experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide. It costs no more than if you were going to use someone else to do it, so really, just do it. And when you do take one of those tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. And don't forget, he's got his DIY tours, he's got his maps, he's got his revitalized happy hour board, and more. I have links to all of those in the show notes for this episode. And once again, if you like this podcast, please take the time and subscribe and give me a good review on iTunes if you would. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Now remember, I made it easy for you to do that with every episode that I create. Just go to my website. You've got to look there. I have links to the places that we talk about. I have pictures and more right there in the blog post and in the show notes for each and every episode that I create. So check it out for sure if you haven't done that already. All right? All right. So, thank you, JR. And thanks, Jeanette and Todd. And thank you, Kelly Gauthier. Stop by, have a meal, drink, catch JR at Tuesday Meet and Greet, catch a live band every night. You know, it's great. Check out that upstairs patio. I love it up there. It's way cool, you guys. All right, I have pictures of that in the show notes. I have links to Kelly's, uh, all the Kelly's things, uh, all the things that she talked about, all the things that Jeanette and Todd talked about. So check them out right there, okay? And thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler, signing off with a wish for all of you. Slow down, be calm, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Puerto Vallarta